Folks, if you're a true Vosh fan, and I know every single person watching this is, there's no such thing as a halfway Vosh fan. I really do, I really do divide people right down that line. Uh, if you've been watching my Fall Guys streams, you know that I have taken an oath, I have taken a pledge um, of monastic um, severity. It's, it's basically, you know, like how the Buddha didn't eat or something, I think? It's kind of like that. Chat knows it. The Come Pledge. All right? Now, I, 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 I hear you wondering, what is the Come Pledge? Well, it's very simple. You can remember it based on um, the, uh, the three letters uh, it is made from. C. Don't argue with leftists online. U. Get more sleep. M. Don't get mad online. C-U-M. Come. As I said, a monastic oath um, that I've taken in large part, and not permanent, by the way, in large part because, frankly, I'd like to consolidate where my hatred comes from at the moment. The get, the get some sleep stuff is just for my benefit, okay? But you should get sleep, too. Um, but it's very, it's, it's very irritating when I go online and I'm like, I want to spend today arguing with fascists. We're on the brink of fascism. Let's argue with some fascists. And then I spend the entire day arguing with lefties who I feel are making the fascist job easier. And it's very, very tiring, uh, but that's okay. Now, what I'm about to do may seem like it's a violation of the Come Pledge. That may seem like it is the case. However, there is a key distinction here, okay? And that is because uh, we are not, in fact, about to argue with or about a leftist. We're about to argue about a CIA agent. Um... Uh, uh, which is, of course, I mean, obviously, CIA agents about as far away from a leftist as you can get. Um, I would live to give a hearty congratulation to whoever at the uh, Central Intelligence Agency crafted this tweet right here. White leftists telling other white leftists that it's okay they used to be fascists. No, baby, it's not, actually. I'd like to give a hearty congratulation, just sort of a... <laughs> A sp just a, a sporting recognition from my side to their side. CIA, you've done a good one. That was a good, that was a good chess move. Um, uh, you know, truly, your the the COINTEL Pro lives and uh, it is alive and it is among us, folks. Um, who boy. So, yeah. Again, uh, this isn't really arguing with a leftist. I know, I know this is CIA propaganda. Um, and I thought we could talk about it super quick. Okay, let's really break this down. Okay. White leftists telling other white leftists it's okay, they used to be fascists, comma, well, actually, like, four ellipses. No, baby, it's not actually. Phenomenal. Um, normally, I wouldn't care. 50,000 likes, though, and there aren't that many lefties on Twitter. I mean, like, yeesh. Eh. That's like a big old chunk of them, you know? That's like a big, it's a big, it's, it's a, a fair portion of the demographic, you know? It's representative to some extent. Now, what they've done here, very cleverly, is uh, they followed this up with another tweet, another brilliant move by the CIA to try to, uh, you know, divide and conquer. They followed it up with another tweet. White communist Twitter, you guys are extremely weird on here. If you're getting mad at this tweet, that's your problem. Don't get mad at me for not trusting you, an ex-fascist. Pretty clever. Pretty clever. See, so now, no matter what I say to criticize this tweet or the messaging behind it, I'm actually part of the problem. Now, I was actually never a fascist. I was like an edgy, right-leaning libertarian at a point, but I feel like that's almost the default ideology for privileged white boys when they're young and they're, you know, they're in high school. Like, eh. well, if you want to do well in life, like, maybe you should try harder, you know? Like, <laughs> like it's, it's just like a really, just very, just very, like, level one default, like, zero thought put into anything ideology. I didn't dislike equality. Like, I wasn't, like, a, a reactionary, you know? I always thought, you know, women and people of color, whatever, should all um, have an equal shot at life and so on and so forth. But I thought that society was more or less a meritocracy with some flaws and that the main problem with Republicans weren't that they were evil, uh, and hated people, it was mostly that they were dumb. And if I, with my big brain, became the president, then I would fix everything by letting the meritocracy run its course without having, a, you know, a bunch of crazy religious fanatics fuss everything up for everybody. That was my, you know, like a 14, 15, like that's where my brain is at, you know? It's not, again, this is like a very low-level ideology. And if, there, and if there, there are any adults watching this who still believe stuff like that, <laughs> hey, um, good luck. But, um, but I never thought equality was a bad thing. Fascists tend to. So I, so I, don't, I don't qualify in the ex-fascist realm. 
Um, but I want to talk about this, okay? So, uh, what does the CIA want more than anything else with regards to uh, leftists in uh, 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 America and their advocacy? Well, they want as few leftists as possible, and they want as little advocacy as possible, obviously, you know? Whether they have to kill the leftists, which they will do in other countries, because it's easier to get away with it there, uh, or they have to <clears throat> subtly disincentivize them from being leftists over here, you know? There, uh, there are so many, that's the nice thing about being CIA, you know? You've got so much power, so many uh, tools in your play kit. Being a CIA agent working on domestic leftism is a little bit like uh, 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 playing Grand Theft Auto. You know what I mean? Just complete open world experience. You know what I mean? Right there? You, you just walk out on the street, there's a car, you take the car, you ramp off a building, you, you phone, you, there's a helicopter, uh, you, the bazooka, like, it's, it's so easy. Um, whereas for us, you know, for lefties, um, it's more like we're playing, uh, what's a very restrictive open world game? I don't even know. Are those even a thing? Maybe. Whatever the case is, um, they don't want many of us. Yeah, we're playing The Witcher 3, okay? We're navigating a complex geopolitical... Fuck, I wish I was playing The Witcher 3. Is it cringe to say Geralt is cool? Is, it, is that like too much of a lay Redditor opinion? I still... I like him as a character. I do. I genuinely do. Yeah. I think he's a cool fucking guy. Um, don't know if I'd want to be him, though. He's got some issues to work through. We're off topic right now. It is the prerogative of every leftist to ensure that the left builds power and builds its numbers. That's what lefties have to do. That's the number one thing we have to do at the moment. See, the best way to effectively seize control of a government as a leftist is through building dual power. We all know dual power, right? It's super easy. It's not easy, but it's super simple. Build power in government. Build power outside of government. Usually unions. That's a really good one. See, there's one power that the bourgeois fear more than anything else, and that's a general strike. It is not possible in the society we live in today for them to fully account for the consequences of a general strike. It's not possible. Everything they have, everything they do, everything they are, all of it is bounced atop a precarious uh, little contraption that rests collectively on our shoulders. And by our, I mean your guys's. Uh, because I am a YouTube streamer, and the world uh, could, could do very well without me in, in, with regards to the power relations between the bourgeois and the proletariat. But um, we don't really have an apparatus right now for building unions in this country. In fact, unions have been about as busted in this country as they have been for like 100 years prior. It's pretty fucked. Um, you can see all those charts online where union participation goes down and down and down. And as it goes down, uh, the percentage of wages that go to the bottom 90% goes down and down and down and down. It's a pretty clear correlation. You actually see, like, the two lines move with each other, like, directly. Um, because unions help the working class. Obviously. And right now, uh, we have no unions. We have very little active leftist advocacy in this country, and we have essentially no power in government, except for, like, the tepid support of social Democrats like AOC and Bernie Sanders, who, don't get me wrong, do good work, but... These aren't like revolutionary vanguards. So what do we need to do right now? We need to build numbers, obviously, because the fascists are way the fuck ahead of us. Can you think of some highly fascistic non-government organizations? Just really quick off the top of your head. Can you think of some uh, organizations which are not officially government, which are pretty fash leaning? Do you think a few? Maybe? The first one that comes to my mind is the NRA lot of power, you know. Uh, there are a number of political advocacy groups that are not directly part of the government that have literally tens of millions, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in annual budget uh, because they're being money, they're being funded by billionaire money and that it's their job to disseminate far-right propaganda to make sure that the working class and their interests uh, are at least in appearance aligned with those of the wealthy. What does the left have? What does the left have? We've got some things, but nothing even close. Uh, if there was a big, you know, uh, uh, catastrophic revolution right now, the fascists would win. Because they have more numbers than us, and they have more power than us. They're always going to have more power than us. Always, 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 always. Because fascists and billionaires get along real good, 
uh, and they will always have more money in this country. Money is power. We can't change that, but what we can change is numbers. And in that respect, we have good arguments on our side because fascism ruins the lives of the poor, uh, whereas leftism elevates them. So we actually have decent arguments on our side. And what you need to do as a leftist is recognize that the greatest war we fight for here in America is the war for public opinion. To get all these people all out there in this country to recognize that our ideas are valid, they're good, they're decent, and they should probably stick with us. So with that being said, once again, hearty congratulations uh, to the CIA agent uh, who thought up of this one. Uh, you, you read the neuroses of the online left with terrifying effectiveness. See, here's the issue with this. There are a couple. First of all, what the fuck do you mean it's not okay to used to be a fascist? What, happens, what happened to rehabilitation? Isn't that supposed to be a critical left value? The right is the one that essentializes people and defines them exclusively by characteristics over which they no longer have any control. That's the rights thing. Now, what you did in your past is no longer in your control. You can't change the past. If you used to be a fascist, you can be the best human being imaginable for the rest of your life, and you remain powerless over your past. So why, as a leftist, would you ever, ever say that a person is terminally bad because of something they're not capable of control. Uh, not capable of controlling. Why? What do you mean it's not okay that they used to be fascists? What ideology is it? can you be born into? Well, well, like, what, the default ideology of this country is liberalism for the most part, though that's starting to decay and more and more people are being raised under openly fascist values right now. Like, what if a person is raised in an environment where those are the ideas they're taught from the beginning? What if these people are like 12 or 13 and get groomed by online neo-Nazis the way a fuck ton of people did during Gamergate? What? Are we to hold them responsible for this? Listen, I have a lot of former fascists in my community. Like, a lot of them. I'd be willing to bet there was a poll earlier. I know a lot of you are former fascists. But, and I'd be willing to bet this is the case for most of the former fascists in my audience, you guys were probably young and were groomed into that ideology by much older online demagogues who convinced you that you were fighting a war against, like, uh, disinfo and censorship, right? You were probably 12, 13, 14, 15, you were young, you were an impressionable, and you got led into it through anti-SJW stuff. As far as I'm concerned, this is essentially tantamount to grooming. Are we really saying that a person can't be a leftist? Because they were groomed as a child? Is that, is that actually the line we're drawing right now? Like we're going to hold people accountable for that? When we say white lefties telling other white lefties it's okay to be, it used to be fascist. No, baby, it's not actually. We're not talking about like proud boys generals who slaughtered black Antifa guys on the street and is now, and are now looking for rehabilitation. Like, not every former fascist is like a fucking vanguard of the violent right. Most of them were young, angry, depressed men um, who uh, 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 had no social group and were led into a really toxic community when they were young, and they clicked with it uh, in large part because they felt they had nowhere else to go, and then they didn't move away from it for a long time because they felt they wouldn't be accepted by other communities based on some of their beliefs. So why, why, why would you affirm that fear of theirs by telling them, yeah, actually, you won't be accepted if you leave the fascist right? Why would you do that? Why would you ever do that? So what am I supposed to, like a fascist is like, I'm questioning my values, you know? And I'm supposed to be like, nah, you won't really be accepted here. You should probably stay a fascist. Is that what I should, is that what I should tell them? Is that, is that what, it's like, no, no, you're a fascist, you should be a, you should stay a fascist, you know? Do we just, they're just forever, like, cursed, they're branded, they're marked, you know? Look, I, I, I can steel man this take, I understand, I understand some of this, okay? I think, um, 
I think a lot of lefties, and these are lefties that I typically call like woke scolds. I think a lot of lefties think that, um, think that like being a fascist, especially if you're a white boy, I don't know why this is particular to you being a white boy. I've met black fascists. I've met female fascists. They're every bit as heinous as white boy fascists, but I don't know. So I don't know why we relegate this to the white boys, but, um, there's this idea that these people have like some intrinsic seething discontent, this hatred of equality as a concept, that they're bad people fundamentally, and that if they become socialists, it's just an aesthetic change. You know, like they get a hammer and sickle, and they wear a yushanka, and they start listening to Soviet propaganda music or whatever, and then, but they're the same person fundamentally. And what this mirrors is a lot of my, uh, a lot of my, you know, commentary on tankies, where I feel like there are a lot of people who just adopt the aesthetics of leftism. But if you're going to say we need to be critical of people who move over to the left only um, aesthetically and don't really fundamentally challenge their own beliefs, that's fine. That's just not what this is. That's not this tweet. This tweet isn't saying we should be critical of people who maintain certain ideological tendencies after they move over to the left. This tweet is saying, no, it doesn't matter what your current behavior is. It doesn't matter how much you've changed. You were a fascist. That will never come off. I browsed through this thread a while back. I'm always a little bit errant to browse through Twitter threads while on stream because I never know if somebody's going to post, like, so Sonic the Hedgehog, like, you know, uh, self-filating in his little spinny ball mode. Like, I don't know, it's, it's Twitter. You can you do a lot of crazy shit on Twitter. Um, but I saw a lot of really weird takes in here. I saw people talking about how they need to wear their former fascism like a brand. Like, like not brand, like a, like a marketing brand, like brand like, like on cattle. Like something you always need to be atoning for. Like you, you always have, like a sex offender, you know, kind of. like. Um, like you go to, you, you move into a new house and you have to alert everyone you're a sex offender. It, like that, except with a fascist, you know? Um, I've seen, there are people in this thread, uh, who are saying that like, um, uh, 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 who are saying like, once you're a fascist, you're always a fascist, so on and so forth. Not only is this really fucking dumb, because a fuck ton of lefties used to be fascist aligned, especially now, because there were so many decent young people who were groomed into far-right ideologies on the internet since 2014 and such, not only is that a fucking issue, but additionally, we are, um, we are, are, are perpetuating the idea that the left is interested primarily in moral purity and not in actually affecting leftism. If you think there are people on the left who aren't doing good for the left, you can criticize that, and that's fine. But again, that's not what this is. This is an, this is an allergic reaction to victory. Right here. This, what, what this is, this is a pathological obsession with failure. It's insane. I can't, like, I can't believe, um, I, I just, I can't believe there are people like this. Positive change should be rewarded. I've said this about everyone, you know, even, even liberals. Like, if a liberal politician goes slightly to the left on an issue, I think they should be given some congratulations. Is it far left enough? No, of course not. But we should indicate to people that we like it when they move left. Like, I think that's very important, you know? We, we should be happy with this. I'll be happy if a fascist just turns into a neocon. It's not great. That's not perfect. But fuck me, dude, there's still a gap there. This goal gets way more complicated because I know there are a lot of people on the left who think that, like, Joe Biden and liberals are fascists. They're repeating all the same mistakes from the German Communist Party. The social fascism and fascism are the same thing. Like, fundamentally, there's no difference whatsoever between, you know, a, a, a tepid neoliberal who just wants to keep taxes low and virtue signal to POC and a person who wants to act, like, openly advocate for genocide. Like, there's no difference between these things. That mistake was one of the reasons why the Nazis came to power in Germany. Um, yeah, hey, Bastiat, you know, fascist Bastiat, um, because being unable to distinguish, God, dude, I've said this before, but people who say Joe Biden is a fascist are like when Charlie Kirk said that Kamala Harris is a radical Marxist. That's what you are. You're doing that. Remember, remember when, when Charlie Kirk said Kamala Harris is a radical Marxist and we were all like, ugh, they can say anything. They'll say anything. 
this far left because they're crazy. That's you. That's you. You're looking into a mirror. If you say that Joe Biden or some liberal or whatever is a fascist, you're looking directly into a mirror. You're putting on a fucking clown outfit. You're putting the makeup on, you know? You're doing the same fucking thing. It's a categorical inability to understand the actual nature of your opponents. It's not, it's not good. It's not a good thing to do. It's not a good thing to be. Look, we need as many lefties as we can, okay? We do, all right? We absolutely do. But we can't gatekeep like this. We can't do it. We, we can't afford to do it. We don't, have enough, we don't have enough numbers, okay? We're not capable of doing it. And I'll take problematic leftists, too. If you... Lefties can be problematic. You guys know that, right? Like, I would rather have a leftist who has some weird opinions on trans people than a fascist who has worse opinions on trans people. That's an improvement. Right there. We, we moved right there. It's better. We moved it to, to a better position. We can't win a revolution exclusively with people who are in complete ideological lockstep with every single fucking thing. I have seen people gatekeep other people from the left for their opinions over neo-pronouns, like Xi Jir. Listen, if that's important to you, like neo-pronouns and people respecting it, okay. You can do that with the people around you. I think there, you can, there are valid discussions to be had here. But are you really saying that a populist, leftist, working class movement, participation in it must be gatekept behind an understanding of the theory behind neo-pronouns? Like, really wonder, like, is that what we're, like, we're going to cross our arms? Like, no, I'm not doing this revolution until everyone here is completely familiar with all of the theory behind my understanding of he, him, lesbians. It's, it's like, uh, fascists don't do this, you know, fascists don't do this. With, with, with fascists, you can, you can believe a bunch of stupid bullshit. You can even have vaguely leftist opinions and they'll still take you. A perfect example of this, shoe on head. She on head has uh, always been a little idiosyncratic when it comes to the groups of people she appeals to. But even back in 2014, 15, 16, 17, she on head was never a fascist. Not even close. Just anti-SJW, whatever, you know? But never a fascist. But fascists loved her. And now they're really, really mad. But we never, ever, ever did the same thing to her, even though Shu historically signaled to the left about as much as she did to the right. We were more selective. And I guess that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just goes to show, like, fascists are, are handsy. They'll, they'll grab anything they can if it means signaling support for their movement, you know? Like, uh, what's his name? Um, what's his name? The really big muscular guy, the black guy, he played, um, uh, he played, like, himself on uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He's like, he's a famous actor. I'm real. I'm, I'm Terry Crews. Terry Crews. Yeah. Terry Crews made some comments about like making sure BLM doesn't become racist to white people or something like that. Um, and they were dumb comments. I didn't agree with them. Uh, but he was lambasted for the left for that. And the right was like, yes. Hello, comrade Terry Crews. Welcome to the fucking club. Even though Terry Crews is probably a fair and progressive person. I know that he's done a lot of uh, really good work with regards to like, um, uh, normalizing discussions about male sexual assault, like sexual assault against men, but fascists still like jumped on that. They were like, yeah, he's ours now. They're so eager to take anything they can. And they've been winning every single year for decades. I just, I wonder if there's an association between those things, you know? I wonder if there's some reason why, some difference in strategy. I'm not saying we have to let every terrible person into our midst. We certainly don't, but Surely the line exists somewhere before this. Surely. This, this can't be right. This essentialist gatekeeping that doesn't even take into consideration your progress, your growth as a person. This isn't right. This isn't correct. This isn't good. Just remember, not every leftist will be sharing your, uh, your queer brunch book club meetings, okay? Not every leftist we have in our midst needs to be your personal friend. You can find a lot of them insufferable, egotistical, stupid. You can find some of them problematic. But if they're useful to the movement broadly, uh, and many people who don't have perfect opinions are, then they belong on the left. They're not all going to be your friends. So don't treat it like you're selecting people for your friend club. 
Also, actually, this is even worse than that. Can you imagine, like, having a friend who's really cool and based in Lefty? And they're like, yeah, back in, like, 2014, I was, like, really big into, like, Sargon and shit. And I really fucking hated Nidhi Sarkeesian. And back in 2017, like, I watched a couple of Lauren Southern videos and I got really into it before I saw some Contra videos in 2019, you know? And then going like, no, 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 we're not friends anymore. Like, even, even if we're talking about, like, um, even if we're talking about, like, um, actually selecting for a friend group that still seems really weird to me like fuck you're, you're how long do you have to know a person as a leftist before it doesn't matter that they used to be a fascist yeah it's always trust issues too it's a side effect of alienation and maybe abuse yeah i know i understand there are reasons why people feel this way there are reasons why some lefties are very very critical of the people they take into their movement i'm just saying they're killing us that's what i'm saying because they're because they like the CIA post. That's what I'm saying. They're they're killing, they're they're killing all of us. You know, that's a that's the problem. Uh, this is so unimportant. No, it's really really not. It's a prevailing ideological tendency in the left to uh, to to gatekeep hard and to essentialize people to not allow people to grow or develop. It got 50k likes, and I've been seeing people act like this for the entire time I've been present online and politically engaged. It's incredibly important. It's very, very important. And, uh, yeah, I would just like to see it stop. It's cringe. Super cringe. Um, just, <laughs> just stop killing us, okay? Holy fuck. It's, I, I know I make this joke over and over and over again, but it's literally, it's literally like you're being marched to the death camps. And somebody next to me is like, well, this sucks, but at least I'm not in line next to any former fascists. She says, staring at current fascists who are leading all of us to the camps. Like, you know, I, I don't know. We're, 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 we're entering the fucking end game here. You know, we're getting pretty close to, we're, we're getting pretty fucking close to some serious political uh, upheaval in this country. We really, really can't be fucking around right now, okay? We can't be fucking around. This is not a good time to be fucking around. Why does class reductionism matter then? Because I can still criticize lefties. I've never said, like, the people who I think have class reductionist tendencies shouldn't be a part of the left. I've never made that claim. Um, if they're so class reductionist that they're not even making class arguments anymore and they're just being anti-woke dipshits, then they're not really on the left. But yeah, it's it's okay to criticize people without like ostracizing people from the left, you know? It's totally possible. Anyway, anyway.